What's going on everybody? How's everybody doing today? About to start this live stream. Um, gonna definitely uh, go into the content. I know that a lot of people watch this on the replay, so wanna make sure that I get through all the information. So it's just one of those situations, people. So hope you understand, hope you understand. Can you guys hear me all right? going on Joseph yeah I'm gonna give you a call back after this uh, um, this live stream crystal crystal clear dope 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 yeah these days what I'm gonna do is when I jump on live you know if we're gonna start at 10 we'll start at 10 that way people that jump on can see it and definitely um, uh, join in, but uh, I know a lot of people they don't have the opportunity so they watch this on the replay and I get that No big deal on that Just taking this opportunity to say what's up to everybody definitely 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 I Got me some Milano cookies definitely not good for me Yeah, I had my phone on silent all day. Oh, really? Yeah, we'll definitely catch up about that. Yeah, it's Jenna's days off. Uh, days off yesterday, so when's her day off? I just she doesn't let me be on my phone. She doesn't let me be on my phone. Looks like it's about 10 a.m. my time, so let me jump on. Oh no, Jenna got me really whooped. I'm not even gonna pretend. All right, mother truckers, welcome to the Asia My Show. Appreciate everybody for joining on on the live. If you didn't get the opportunity to join on the live, you could definitely watch this on the replay. So I don't know if the title reads or not, but um, as of the moment, we are talking about making U-turns. Okay, now I don't care who you are. This is a very, t very, very tricky, tricky subject. All right, that's all I have to say. Everyone that's been trucking, I don't care how long. There's a situation that you've been in or I've been in where U-turns in semi-trucks have been dangerous as hell, okay? Now, as far as the question of the day, real quick, someone asked, as Asian Mai, I love the show, and I just want to ask you, I just started trucking, and I missed my turn, and I made a U-turn, and I took out a pole. You know, I was so devastated. You know, what could I have done differently? All right, so in this situation, that's why we're talking about U-turns. Since you're a new trucker, I'm here to tell you, 
If you miss your turn, you just got to keep on going. Everybody in the comments down below, if you're watching this on the replay as well, you're going to know that if you miss your turn, the first thing that happens, you start freaking out. I remember I started freaking out like so bad when I first started trucking. Every situation. It didn't matter the situation. When people honked at me, I freaked out. When I wasn't sure where I was, I freaked out. Patience is definitely the game in trucking. But as far as talking about U-turns, I would say don't do U-turns if you don't have to do a U-turn. And so just like the situation, you had to make a U-turn or you felt you had to make a U-turn and and you and you basically wrapped it around and you took out a pole, right? And that probably didn't save you any time because the first thing you're thinking when you're trying to make a U-turn is, I got to make this U-turn so I can save some time. Well, I'm sure that police report uh, didn't save you any time at all, <laughs> okay? And, and we know this to be true. So first off, if you got to make a U-turn, just think about it. Try to find a big area. Okay, so uh, let me walk you through this, and this is what I do. You tell me what you do. Uh, you know, uh, definitely leave the comments below about this. So just say I missed my turn, I'm a, and I'm like, oh, crap, I need to make a U-turn or I need to turn around. I'll safely start going into the right lane until I'm on the side of the – somewhere safe, just parked on the side, right? And I'm going to park on the side for just a few minutes, Okay. I'm on look on my GPS for a Walmart, a Home Depot, Home Depot, a mall, something big where I could turn in and then I could turn around. Okay. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want your GPS just to reroute you. If you've seen videos from me from the past, when I got rerouted in uh, Connecticut, I needed basically the police to escort me out because I got stuck. Your GPS will go stupid and reroute you the wrong route. So definitely, if you miss your turn, don't try just to make a U-turn. You know, pull over safely. Put on your emergencies. And then, for 5, 10 minutes, whatever, look at your phone. Find alternate routes. Do what you need to do. But just... Don't just make that first illegal U-turn because you will just take out that poll, okay? So I can't say that enough. Uh, thank you for that question because I think a lot of truck drivers have that question as well. Now, as far as this goes, let's talk about how much requirement it takes or the spacing it takes to actually make a U-turn in a semi-truck, okay? And... Let me jump over here real quick. Let me show you this. And um, definitely I saw this training video. Again, I do not own this video. But it was such a good video that I want to jump on and give a shout out to uh, the, the, the trucker channel that put this on as well. Because this is just some great information. All right. So this video is called Tractor Trailer Space Requirements for a U-Turn, right? Now, subscriber-wise, this gentleman should have a lot more views because this, this is a great video. Let me blow this up real quick. And basically, how much of a radius you kind of need to make that turn. You're going to see right here he's going to stop. And he's going to see how much turn that takes. Now, I know that you could do backups and things like that, but that could get dangerous when you're doing a U-turn. Give me a second, guys. Make sure it's back on. Technical difficulty for a second. But as you can see right here, it's almost at, 
it's basically almost at 89 feet. Okay, you could zoom into that. It's almost 89 to 90 feet. All right, so the turn radius to make that turn is almost 90 feet, people. And 90 feet is a lot, okay? Like the gentleman stated in the video, it's about seven highway lanes, okay? Now, I'm not going to say that I haven't made a U-turn in a sketchy area and backed up, went forward, backed up, went forward, and then barely made it. But that situation can really happen to you. So if you have a mindset that your truck is going to take about anywhere between 85 to 90 feet to turn one radius one time without backing up, that's a lot to handle. So you should definitely think twice about doing U-turns. Okay. Now, now talking about this training as well, let me tell you why it is really bad to do U-turns, right? And please comment below. Tell me your situation of any times that you've had as well. But the biggest dangers of making a U-turn, I'm going to pop this up so you guys can see this. So there's a couple factors that you got to look at. The inherent risks of tractor trailers making U-turns. A lack of sufficient visibility for the driver. Given the width, length, and height of a big rig, they have so many blind spots. It's just not possible for drivers to turn their truck around safely on their own as they cannot possibly see all dangers around them. I would say that's true. Okay. Another reason why U-turns are very dangerous is insufficient lighting or highway uh, or high visibility markings. All right, most tractor trailers on the roads today simply do not have adequate markings to make them um, conspicuous enough for other motorists to see them with enough time to slow down or avoid. You know what's crazy? In my trucking career, I would think that as big as we are, people will look at us and say, Hey, I noticed this truck is doing something, but they don't. They never think that we're going to do a U-turn. So oncoming traffic, people that are trying to turn in the lane, they're not even thinking twice. It's kind of like motorcycles, you know, kind of like how four wheelers don't look at motorcycles when they're driving, right? It's just like people don't pay attention to semi trucks, even though they're really big. All right. And of course, the last one, which is a big one in the East Coast is, uh, Traffic lane blockage. The average truck takes at least 40 seconds to complete a U-turn, which means the trailer is blocking most, if not all, of the lanes of traffic for close to a minute. That's a long time to expose other drivers to the dangers, though poorly marked trailer pose. So, it takes over a minute, people. Alright, it takes over a minute to make that U-turn. And I know we've jammed and made it pretty fast, or we made it a lot faster, but, you know, it's it's happened to me. And I'll tell you a quick story. Um, one time I had to make a U-turn. And this situation, I, I, I guess I could have helped it. But if you guys don't know, I'm a mover. Being a mover, all I have to tell you about being a mover is I have to go to a lot of cul-de-sacs. I should have known to back down this cul-de-sac. But everybody and their mama was telling me that, no, I can make it in. I can U-turn around. No problem. You're going to find out real quick that most people don't drive a truck and shouldn't be telling you what to do anyways, right? When you're asking for information, um, people sometimes they think that you're talking about a straight truck or something like that. So you have to be specific when you're asking for information, right? You got to tell them that you're 70 feet, 75 feet, you're a big semi truck. But even with that, you better look. So in this situation, I, I call the customer and I say, hey, I need to get down your cul-de-sac. Can I turn around uh, your roundabout? He said, yes. Well, guess what? It didn't happen so and I basically, I jackknifed and my trailer pushed into my truck. And this was my old Freightliner. I had an old Freightliner before this International. And my air hoses popped out. It was just a mess. Okay. So I've been there. You know, I've been close to taking out poles and things like that too. But just like the question of the day, you know. What could he have done differently? Well, a lot of times you just got to go down and you got to look 
and you got to see. Before, of course, for your situation where you miss your stop, don't let your GPS reroute you. I'm telling you that again. I can't say that how important I can say that because your GPS will never reroute you correctly. All right. Always make turns in malls, Home Depot, big plazas. Uh, definitely uh, tell me your situation. Comment it below. Maybe I'll, I'll I'll do some phone calls. You could call in to see if uh, you want to talk about a situation where a U-turn was bad. But uh, talking about this as well, there's a viral video going around right now of uh, a truck driver, a flatbed truck driver, trying to make a U-turn. And you can see his situation is definitely not good. All right. So let me show you this real quick. And then we'll open the lines maybe to some uh, comments, phone calls and such. But I'll show you this. And this was on um, CDL Life. Okay. I use this uh, website as a resource a lot. They find all the trucking news. Makes it easy for me. All right. Let me show you this real quick. So this flatbed, he missed his turn. So he needs to make a U-turn. Check out how he makes his U-turn. So you could tell he's, oh, he's in the East Coast for sure, right? Now he's stressed out. At first I thought he was going to park. But he definitely didn't park. He's backing up and blocking traffic. I could tell. I could tell what he's trying to do already. All right. And this is a situation that you don't want to be in. You, you don't want to be in a situation trying to make these U-turns. You see, he's, he's, he's stressed out. He's backing up. He's trying to make it. And what we talked about earlier, right? It takes about 80 feet to make a U-turn, maybe in a flatbed a little bit less because of the kind of trailer he has. But still, don't hit that truck. Don't hit that truck. Don't hit that truck. Oh, Jesus. Jesus smacked it didn't look like he did any damage to that truck but man not good not good people so as you can see in the video this is not a good situation smack down he's just tearing everything up i'm not telling him to listen to my advice but if, see, if he would have just stopped and parked there for a good 10, 15 minutes out of danger, try to find an alternate route, try and find a big place to do a U-turn, something, it would have been a lot better than taking out all those things. You know? So, that's craziness. It's craziness. You know what I mean? Like, that was... <clears throat> definitely not necessary. So when looking at all this, I will tell you, U-turns can be very dangerous. <laughs> so that's the information that I have for U-turns. Um, definitely let me know your information. Let me know <clears throat> your stories. If you ever ripped up anything, anything like that. May I take some calls for a little bit? See what you guys are thinking about the situation. In the meantime, let me see what's up to some people. Thank you for jumping on and joining. It's early in the morning. Drew Dub, how you feel about Team Owner Ops? Me and my best friend for 15 years thinking about going half and half on a new rig and building over the years and having a fleet. That's a great question. I would say... With that, you could be as successful as you want to be, but if you have a strong relationship with your friend and that just never, you know, if you know each other well and that's not going to hurt anything because sometimes it's not the business side, it's the personal side that gets, you know, between the business and then that could fail your business. So that's why... I would recommend that 
You know, you just make sure that's solid. If that's solid, that could be a great idea. You know what I mean? But in my own perspective, when doing business with friends, sometimes you don't feel like you could be 100 with them. You don't feel like you can tell them everything you want to tell them. Because if you do, you feel that on your personal relationship side, that might hurt you guys. So, you know, that that's the big part. If you're solid, go ahead and do it. Definitely. Give me a second, people. Let me see if I could jump on this and uh, answer this bad boy. My phone calls aren't ringing. Give me a second. Let me give you... Let me give you a buzz back. Something's going on with my phone calls. I'll fix that next time for sure. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, brother? Sorry I missed your call the other day. Oh, Alex. Oh, it's all right. Um, did you get a new number or something? Or is no, it Jenna? No, this is, the, uh, this is my uh, um, my YouTube number. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So one thing that I do, um, I run two GPS units, and they're by two different brands, so they always pretty much use different routes for the same place. And that really helps because, especially for new drivers, if you are in a situation, especially up north, uh, you know, the northeast, one GPS is going to be telling you you need to take a left and one's going to be telling you you need to take a right. And between the two, you can figure out pretty easily most of the time which one is right and which one is wrong because they're not typically right in the northeast. You know, there's a lot of GPS issues in that, that entire area. So... That's one way I avoid doing U-turns. But if you have to do a U-turn, and sometimes you do, uh, I'll do it even in intersections. I really don't care. But the <laughs> trick is you, you really – and see, this is hard for new drivers because when you're new, you don't have that kind of confidence. But sometimes traffic will get my blood pressure up so much that I'm ready to just jump out the truck and whoop somebody's ass. At that point, when I have to make a U-turn, I'm going to do whatever I want to do to make the U-turn. So I'll usually lay on my horn. I'll have my, my hazards on. I'll go all the way across the intersection about three times. And at that point, traffic's like, what in the hell is this dude doing? You know, they, they're thinking you're, you've lost your mind. They don't know what's going on. And they're going to back up. They're going to stay away. They might even stop in the middle of the street. That's what you want. Once you know that you're in the clear because these people don't want to be anywhere near you, then you can whip that thing around as fast as possible and take off the other way. I've done that so many times I can't even count all over the U.S. And it, I've never had an issue where it didn't work, you know. But, you know, I, it's, I'm not saying that people should do that because technically it's probably not legal. But, you know, if you have no other real option or, you know, you're going to have to go 30 miles out of your way to get back. Right. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm, taking, that, I'm taking the chance. Hey, yeah, that's talking real trucker right wait, there. We work. <laughs> that's talking real trucker right there. Cause I'm going to be honest and keep it real with everybody too is when I'm, when I'm about to do something crazy, like a crazy turn or a crazy something, I make sure there's no truck or no cars or no vehicles behind me. But when I make that maneuver, I'm making it really known that I'm about to do something crazy. And worse comes to worse, hey. at least everybody know this trucker is up to something, right? Yeah. Because I, I do that, too. While, you got to. You got to, especially in the East Coast. Uh, um, I know what you're oh, saying. You can't reroute all the time. And a lot of times, this is one-way roads. What do you think about that video with that flatbed guy? You think he definitely made well, the wrong step? That's funny. Uh, you know, that's a touchy subject because the reason I said that, that was probably in Pennsylvania is because that looks exactly like where I had to do a U-turn. 
And if that's the same, no, for real. And if that's the same exact place, which it, it looks so similar, if it is, he couldn't keep going forward. There is no way because there's a small traffic roundabout right there with poles, and a box truck can't even make it through there, much less the um, a semi truck. So right. if that's the same place, he had no choice. But I made a U turn there, and the only thing I did was I, I messed up my um, my aerodynamic skirts bumping into the uh, trailer. But it was I knew I was doing it because there was no way for me to make the turn without doing it because there was so much stuff around me. But um, I don't know if it's the exact, exact place or not, but I bent the skirts back out, so that's not a big deal. Sometimes you have to go through that to, to get something done, you know? No, I hear you. If that truck wasn't there and he went deep in, he could have made it. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, He definitely could have. But that's, that's it's, the situation. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it is. <laughs> People are always going to go through that. It doesn't matter how much experience you have. There is going to come sometimes in some places where you're going to be like, oh, man, what the hell did I get myself into now? You know, but running two GPS units, that's the best thing I can tell you to do. I run a Ram McNally and a Garmin. Mm-hmm. And, but you know, as long as they're two different brands, they're going to they're gonna try to tell you to do two different things. And that's what you really want because you want to be able to see – okay, is this the right way to go or is this the right way to go? Because, man, they all mess up sometimes. It doesn't matter what brand it is. But the chances of them messing up at the same time are slim. No, I hear you. So it's worth the extra expense, you know? Well, I do the cell phone. I'd be honest with you. I'll do do my Rand McNally and then I'll do my – my my phone GPS, and then I always make the um the the decision, you know, the decision myself what I'm gonna do. So yeah, sometimes I do that too. I just I'm I'm really wary about using the cell phone GPS in the Northeast, especially around New York City and stuff, because it will take you down low bridges all day. And uh, <laughs> I, I've had that happen before too, and I had to run through a bunch of construction traffic cones and and barriers and stuff. I just at that point, I didn't care. I had to because it was either call the police and block off the entire interstate or run through all that construction stuff and have people looking at me crazy. So I just did that and got back on the interstate. Yeah. So no, so at the, at the end of the day, I, I love the advice. And it's true what he's saying, people. So everyone out there, if you get into trucking, there's going to be chances where you're going to have to do U-turns. You know, you, you're not, there's going to be times where you don't want to do it, but you're going to have to. There's going to be times where you're going to be jumping over grass and things like that. I mean, I'm, I'm a grasshopper. <laughs> it happens and, at and times. If, it's, if you're new, you know, just keep in mind where your tandems are. If you've got a load that was loaded a particular way and you had to have your tandems real far back, well, you already know, or you should, if you're in tight, you know, spaces, you can't really do a U-turn as it is, even if your tannins were all the way up. It's already going to be hard enough. You're going to want to move those tannins before you even start trying to do that. And, you know, once you have your tannins all the way forward, you, then you got to be mindful of that, that, that tail swing. Oh, you know, yeah. because you can't really see where that tail is going. I've seen truckers knock mirrors off, smack cars, all kinds of stuff with that, that trailer swing because they just don't, you know. With experience, though, you, you, that stuff will come, and then you'll you'll know what you can and can't do in pretty much every situation. I hear that, brother. I hear that, man. Shoot, man. Thanks for the call, man. I appreciate you for the insight. Everyone out there, get five GPSs. <laughs> 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 yep. Shoot All right, it. bro. Take care. Yes, sir. Peace. Later. Yeah, people. So as as you can hear... You're going to need like five or ten GPSs to get the job done. That's what it's going to take. You know what I mean? Um, anyone else have any stories or uh, want to comment below? Let me know uh, about this situation with U-turns because I really want to be helpful and give good advice. But also know that what we're doing here, we're a community, man. So if there's any other advice besides the one I gave, the besides the the two or five gps's that you need anything else that you use that is beneficial uh please uh comment below so that people can see that or uh give a call and out and we could talk about it let's see who we got here what's up brother how you been Rocking and rolling, bro. Rocking and rolling. We're actually up in the Northeast today. We're up in uh, we're we're up in upstate New York, 
Uh, and then we're going to be going to Portland, Maine, man. So this is a good, this is a good topic about U-turns. Uh, a lot of the mega carriers, if they catch you doing a U-turn, they will fire you. Really? I didn't know that. That's good advice. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, uh, Werner, one of the, one of the, uh, one of actually, uh, one of the Werner's sons, uh, got fired. He got actually rehired after a bit, but he got fired because he did a U-turn right in front of the uh, uh, right in front of the shop. Actually, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny, yeah. Man. But I wanted to say, I wanted to say, you know, I wanted to kind of add, uh, you know, to what Joseph was saying. I, I do two uh, GPSs as well, and my phone. It's phenomenal. Between the three, you can always. One of the things that I always do, if you're working spot market, a lot of times your dispatcher will send you an address, mm-hmm. and you got to make sure that the address that they sent and the bill of lading are the same. Perfect example, yesterday, uh, my the address she sent me uh, versus the address that was on the bill of lading was different. So what I did is I Google, and then uh, a lot of these places – you 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 uh, get on the phone with them, even if they're not there. Mm-hmm. It'll give you specific instructions. Like at this place, it has specific instructions from this area. Uh, press one from this area. Press two. Yada yada yada. Um, another thing, when you're new, you don't really have the confidence. Uh, you know, well, some people don't, but I can tell you that most people are. Uh, most people are pretty. One here, one here. Not a problem. I got a sign for something, Alex. No, go ahead. Uh, most most people, what you want to do is you want to get out of your truck if you have to, mm-hmm. and you just want to you just want to tell people. Right there. Well, you got it okay. Uh, He's working, people. He's working. He's working. Yeah, I'm working. Sorry about that. You got to get out of the truck. And a lot of times out in the Northeast, you have to direct traffic. You have to tell people, hey, you got to move. You got to move. You got to move. Right? And then let them move. Let them do their thing. Sorry about that, guys, by the way. Let them do their thing. And then do, like he was saying, do do a U-turn right in the middle of the intersection. I've done that. Uh, I've done that. I did that in in Atlanta like two or three times because in Atlanta, there's parts of Atlanta where it, it, there's nowhere you can go. You have to do a U-turn. Yep. There, it's, it's, Atlanta is insane. And once you get loaded, your your whole goal is you're like, oh, my God, how do I get to the highway? You just want to like cry. Everywhere. <laughs> you want to oh, see a grown man cry, uh, uh, lose his way? And uh, <laughs> uh, uh, your GPS says reroute a few times, and you'll see a grown man cry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like sometimes you don't want to listen to your GPS. You and you, another thing you have to do is you have to you have to actually listen to your intuition because a lot of times your gut will be telling you one thing, right? And then your GPS will be telling you another. So if you don't listen to your gut. You, you, almost all the time, every time I don't listen to my gut, I end up coming back to that exact same place where I was like, oh, man, I should have listened to my, you know, my intuition. You know what I mean? But, hey, I'm going to let you go. We're going to get to work. We're going to burn up some miles today going to Portland, Maine, rocking and rolling. Get it, uh, Have a great day. Yeah. Have a great day, man. You're doing, you're doing, uh, your show is phenomenal, man. You, uh, you, you're doing a great thing for us here today. Hey, you know, as long as people keep on calling in with experience like you got and other people, it's helpful, brother. So I appreciate you for that very much. All right. All right. Take care. God bless my guy. Yes, sir. Peace. All right, mother truckers. So you heard it. Sometimes you're just gonna have to go with your intuition. It's gonna have to happen, man. I mean, there's 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 no way around that. You know what I mean? 
and and the situation behind it. And here's another one I just thought of that came up, and you guys tell me what you think about this. When when you're driving somewhere and you get there safely, make sure that you go back the right way. That's all I have to say. If you think about it, if you got there safely the first time, you could get out safely the same way. Because your, your, your truck GPS will do something funny. It'll start, it'll get you there safely wherever your shipping address is. And then it'll reroute you to go like a faster way back out. And the reason why I'll do that is you might put in another address. But I'm telling you, go back out the way you came in and get back out to that highway. You get out back to that highway and you're going to be safe. You're going to be okay. That's all I got to say about that. Let's look at a couple of these. See what's going on. Um, uh, Jerry Rose, uh, Jerry Ross, apologize, uh, says, can you drive at night with mega carriers? Uh, yes, you can drive at night. They want you to drive all day long, all day long. So that won't be a problem. Um, Jerry Ross says, uh, difference between night and day, uh, trucking. I'll honestly say, depending on what you're doing, uh, but it seems like you, you could, it's scarier at night, but honestly, I feel more comfortable driving at night. And the reason why is when it's the middle of the night, there's no traffic, you know, um, you can get by. That traffic thing will kill you, baby. I'm telling you that right now. So a lot of these uh, truck drivers will tell you that they enjoy driving at night because they get to basically pass all that traffic. Because when you're in the East Coast, you could be stuck, man, in like a, a 20 mile radius to where you need to go. Like you don't want to be in Greenwich, Connecticut. Six o'clock in the morning. That sounds early, but you don't want to be there six o'clock in the morning. You're going to be stuck there. <laughs> so in that sense, driving at night seems a lot safer. Now, uh, as far as during the day, more traffic, but you can see more. So that could be better as well. But for a lot of truck drivers, I would say that driving at night, they like it more because there's less traffic. Comment below if you agree or not. Let me know what you think about that. Um, yep. Joseph says night safer. My English is terrible. Can I become a truck driver? You can become a truck driver, but if your English is terrible, I would say that um, getting your CDL, you have to take your CDL permit test and you have to take the actual road test in English. And the reason why, and it's not about being biased about anything. It's just that all the signs in the United States are all in English. And when you go through the weight scales and the DOT and all this, you have to understand what they're saying to you. So for that reason, you have to at least have a sense uh, better of, um, you know, the English language and understanding what that is. OK, so but yes, you can be a truck driver. And yes, there are a lot of people that struggle with speaking English that are not um, American born that are truck drivers and they're doing a great job. So I don't want to discourage you. I'm just letting you know that you do have to pass all the tests, the road tests, all that stuff in English because all the signs and everything in the whole United States are in English. Okay, Fred Ramsey, uh, Rami, uh, thanks for the two dollar uh, super chat. You know, you don't have to do that, but I appreciate you. Uh, nights are by far the best. Hey, facts. Um, Ricardo Lopez says night driven is great, but there's a lot of road construction. There's a lot of road construction all the time. You're going to see that in the summertime especially. I don't know why they're always fixing these roads. New Jersey, their roads suck. Um, you're, if you're on the uh, 10, as soon as you start getting into like El Paso, they're always fixing it. I don't know what they're fixing. They've been fixing the same road for 50 freaking years, but that's what it is, right? Um, Fierce Jaws, uh, welcome. Uh, when are you getting back on the road? I want to watch those vids again. I am going to get back on the road uh, sooner than later. I'm just waiting for a, a good money-making load. You know what I'm saying? I, I'll i be honest with you. In the past, I would just be on the road all season long. And, you know, I, ha I had to do that. But um, Jenna's a stylist. And so the situation in hand is making it as a stylist is hard. So let me back it up a little bit. So Jenna was a uh, teacher, right? So teachers, uh, bless their heart, but they don't make a lot of money. 
So I was trucking, you know, I was doing what I can. And then basically she had a, a talent and a passion for being a stylist. So, man, it just took a long time to build up like a clientele and things like that. So I just stay on the road. Now Jenna's at the point where she's getting like 10 to 12 clients a day charging like uh, 50 to to $100 per um, service. So you can do the quick math. She's making great money. And because of that, when the loads aren't great, you know, we could stay home a little bit more. You know what I mean? So that's the long story of that. But um, it, it just it's just one of those things where everyone's going to figure out what they need to do. And I know it seems like I'm just always, always at home. And I don't want. I don't want anyone to think that I'm the guy trying to tell truck drivers what to do or what to say, but I'm not out there trucking too. So I never want anyone to ever feel that way. If they do, I apologize about that. But yeah, for movers, um, the season is very slow for us. A lot of people don't move in the winter time, And because of that, you know, we don't make a lot of money. So long story long again. I'm hoping probably by February or March I could start working again. And I enjoy working. That's the thing. I love trucking, man. Like that's that's my that's my thing. Like I wouldn't even be making uh I wouldn't even be making like trucking videos if I didn't like love this, you know. That's that's just like the truth. But long story very very long. Jaws yeah, hopefully by February or March. Let's see. Andy, how long does your trainer stay with you once past your test and get hired at a company? Uh, trainers usually will st- – it's it's really – you got to let them know. You have to control the ball on that, okay? You don't want people to just jump on and say, hey, you know, You've been in the truck with me for a month. Get out on your own. You have a say. If you don't feel comfortable about something, you got to keep on doing your thing. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things where I don't want you to be in a situation where you feel forced. So for some people, it might be two months. It might be three months of training. But I know some companies, they try to get you out there as fast as possible, train you in about three weeks. So you don't want that to happen. Now, so the long story long again is uh, it usually takes, uh, uh, if it's a good company, they'll train you for about, you know, two months. But if it's a fast company, they're going to try and train you for about three weeks and it's horrible. I hate that because I'm still learning every day. Uh, Sanjay says, I'm thinking about enlisting Air Force. But many people say truck drivers make more money than military. Is it true? I'll say this. Um, It's the game plan. I have a friend that's in the Air Force right now. And being in the Air Force, what happens with him is he has he's if he retires with being in the Air Force for 25 years, he gets a pension of like five to six thousand dollars a month. So if you're a young guy, you know, you're you're 20 years old. And by the age of 45, being in the Air Force or what have you, you can have a pension of like five, six grand a month. So you could be like retired at the age of 45, 50, right? So that's the long, that's the long safe game. But as far as trucking, it's a working business. You could make a lot of money. You could not make a lot of money. It's. It just depends, right? If you're in it for the the short short run just to make a buck, you're going to find yourself not happy because the lifestyle, it's rough, it's hard. And after a year and a half of training and working for um, a company that gave you the experience, you're working your butt off making $35,000, $40,000 a year, you know, net. So it can be very difficult. Now, if you could outlast that and you could outlast trucking for a few years, two, three years, 
you know, there's there's money in it. But there's money in anything that you learn how to be more efficient at and work the business. There's always going to be more money in that. You just have to understand how to work the business and be more efficient. That's why people make more money. It's not because of how long they've been doing something. But as far as just should I go to the Air Force or should I go trucking? At that point, I would say it'd be more passion. You know, do you want to go to the military because you love your country and you want to serve your country? Do you want to go trucking because you want to see the nation and you love driving a truck? You know, it comes more down to that. Because I can't say this enough, people. We live one life and living this one life. I'd rather make less money and be happy than make more money and be not happy. You know what I mean? That's that's the truth. Let me plug in my laptop before this blows out. Give me one second. If I lose y'all, you'll know why though. But yep, let's see. Chico Slim. So are you on a staycation? It seems like it, right? Yeah, I'm at home. I'm hanging out, man. I'm hanging out. Uh, Mini Flo says, shoot, ain't nothing wrong with home time. I'll be honest. I work for myself. So I am I work when I want to work. I'm home when I want to be home. You know what I'm saying? Um, I talked about in the other day, a live feed, talking about, you know, someone has to work for you to be home. So I put in a lot of time, a lot of hard effort investing in real estate when the market was good, doing things like that. Saved up. Paid off a lot of bills. Most bills. My house payment is super low. Put a high, a really big down payment on that, right? At the time, I put down like 150000 on my house. So my payments aren't too bad. Everything's legit. Jenna makes good money. So I'm just at like a cool, cush spot. I don't need to, like for myself personally, I don't need to go out and make $150,000 working all year round. I can like sit back a little bit and make sixty grand working half the year. And we'll still be good. Just live within your means, right? Because I can't say this enough, people. It's not about making money. It's about building happiness. You know what I'm saying? So many people say that making money is happiness. I'll say this. Money does help a lot of frustrating situations. Paying bills. Feeding family. But, you know, there's always there's always a, a push and pull. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you need to drive... A BMW, a Mercedes, and have a boat. You know what I'm saying? I understand if you really love cars and you buy one car you like, but what's up with the next, the extra car, right? What's up with the boat? What's up with this? What's up with that? When you're just keeping up with people, you're gonna, you're gonna just, you're just working to work at this point. So, you know, I'm happy with everything I have, man. We should definitely talk about that for a second. What's the key to happiness? The key to happiness is being happy with what you have. If you're not happy with what you have, then you'll never be happy because getting more will do nothing for you, right? And if you want to make more money, then your value of earning money just has to be more. It's really that simple. You know what I'm saying? That's it. The need, man. How do you provide a need? That's it, right? If you provide a need that a lot of people can provide, then people might not pay you for what you're worth. You know what I'm saying? That's just the truth, right? All you guys watching here, I'm letting you know right now, I can't do flatbed. I don't know nothing about flatbed. So if there's two truck drivers... And I don't know nothing about flatbed and they need something, some equipment that's big to be carried on a flatbed. There's a great chance they're going to hire that other guy before me. So simple as that. Build your build your skill set up and you'll be good to go, man. That's why I like the moving game. Why? Because when I move furniture, when I have to move myself, I dread it. So as a mover, if I hate moving myself, what what would anyone think of getting into the business of moving? So I know I have a secure job because even I don't like moving myself. So get into something that's stressful. 
get into something that's hard or get into something that people don't want to do. You pick your option. But if you create a need, then you'll make more money, right? Let's see what people are saying. Uh, being debt free makes me happy. That's what I'm talking about. You know, we could talk about this real quick. So Chico Slim says being debt free makes me happy. What's the biggest debt that you could ever like? What's the biggest debt that you can ever have? Is buying a house. Buying a house is actually the biggest debt you can ever have. Okay, somewhere along the line, someone told you that buying a house is the American dream. Well, is it really the American dream? Because now you're spending 30 years, a 30-year mortgage loan, and you're going to have to live in one spot. You know even when you pay off the house, you're still going to have to pay interest. You're going to have to pay taxes, land, land fees. You know, you might not have a mortgage, but you're still going to make payments. You know, that's just facts. But everybody believes, right? Even I at one point believed that you have to own your house. Oh my God, I'm working really hard. Why? So that I could be in 30 years of debt. What's the difference between a person that rents their house versus a person that owns their house? One person could say, hey, I own this house. Well, the truth be told, when you're making payments on the house, the first five years is all interest. You're making interest, you're paying back the interest that you owe on the house. So it's just like paying rent. So if you don't live in a house for at least five years or more, all you're actually doing is paying the interest for what the house is. None of it goes to the principal. If you don't know what that means, the principal is the actual money that goes to paying off the actual payment of the house. Okay. So the concepts of what I'm thinking of are changing, right? So if someone doesn't own a house and they got a lot of money in their bank and they're renting, that's living more debt free than paying for something that you have to make that payment, right? And I've, I've learned something about people. People will always live with that, like outside their means. It's just what people do. It's crazy, but that's what people do. Fred uh, Rami says, the key to happiness is progress. I like that. Debt free equals happiness. Amen to that. So overall, people, you know, just having a conversation about U-turns and doing this and that. You know, at the end, I, I kind of always get uh, a little bit into the money side because that's what I enjoy as well. Uh, but really, it's just about happiness. That's that's what I want for everyone, just to be happy, Right. A lot of times people are thinking, I don't want, that's why I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea. Why the hell is Alex always at home and he seems to be making money, right? Well, just find out how you want to live your life and you could do it that way, right? Two things that cost you the most money, can't say it enough. Where you live, second, your wife, your kids. Or vice versa, right? Your spouse and your house. Hey, that rhymes, right? So if you don't have a spouse and you don't have a house, you're a hundred steps, a hundred steps advanced over so many people. You know what I mean? And we could do a video about this one time is um. sometimes I, I truly believe that your spouse is the one that even though they are ride or die for you and they're the one that's supposed to have your back, they're also the one that keeps you from being successful. And that's another topic. And you'd be like, what do you mean by that, Alex? And you can't tell me that a lot of times you had an idea, you wanted to do something. Maybe it was getting to trucking, start a trucking business. And your counterpart, your, your, your spouse, your husband or your wife said, you know what? Let's play it safe. We don't need to do that. You know what I'm saying? If you always play it safe, then that's just going to be the life that you'll live. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not I'm not saying I haven't taken L's because I've taken a lot of L's. But trying just to get ahead and taking so many L's 
and I mean losses, all you need is like one or two wins, one or two W's, and it could change your lifestyle. You know what I mean? Lol Troll says, when are you going back to work, driver? I know, I'll go back to work, I promise. February, February or March, or April or May. I'm going back, I promise. I love this thing. It's just the loads aren't good for movers right now. I think every business is seasonal. Doesn't matter what you're in. Every business is seasonal. So that's where I'm at. So overall, man, I appreciate you all, man. I thank you. I hope that you uh, enjoyed the show. And I appreciate you guys for, for everything, man. That's the truth. So thanks for rocking me like always. I could keep up this live show. I enjoy doing it, but it's one of those things where if you don't if you don't like it then uh No, I get it, you know. You know the truth be told Gary V's a cool dude, man. I like that guy. And you know what? I think I saw uh we have the same mindset, man, but that dude is a genius, man. He really is. And I really can't say this enough, man. Anything that I spit out from you guys, it's very hard, very, very hard to have an authentic, unique thought that's your own. You know what I mean? A lot of people have put out the blueprint and they understand. So... I just want you guys to know that I listen, I read, I watch everybody, man, but I soak in what I can soak in by myself and see how that rolls. Um, the wifey must feel like she wears the pants now. Hey, <laughs> that's one thing that we can talk about. It might be a, a touchy subject to all, but when I made the money, she had control. When I made the money, she had control. So imagine how much control she'd had if I didn't make any money. Jeez. I wouldn't want to listen to that one. I actually don't even want to think about that at all. At all. You know, thank you guys for rocking. I appreciate you guys, man. Thanks, and uh, you guys have a great day. Peace out. I believe that big rooster. Only poor people say money doesn't buy them happiness. It takes a little bit of everything, man. But I I can't do this without having backup, man. Having Jenna to back me up. I have a good family support. What up, Benny Float? Before I get off, do you guys think that uh, I should keep on doing these lives or do you like regular videos? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, uh. Asia my, Asia my. Just love, just a truck drive. Doing things nine to five. Working out just to survive. I just don't know. Tell me, tell me, tell me where to go. Feel like a float. Can't rap. Sunk like a boat, but. Peace out, people. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Peace.